Welcome to Sunderland Elementary School committee meeting for January 2018. Uh, so, uh, main thing uh, for the agenda today is to get a, our um, first review um, draft of uh, the FY19 budget. Um, but before we get there, uh, we will uh, we get the minutes from December. Move to approve the minutes from December 19th. Right. I'll second. Okay. Any discussion? Questions? No? All in favor? All right. And opposed? No? Questions? Good. We're good. All right. All right. Thanks. Uh, and then the financial statements and warrants. Okay, so you have seven warrants tonight that total $84,120.13. I sent you the December report, and there are a couple of areas uh, I'm concerned about, um, uh, both good and bad. If you look on, um, we can go through this page, what I hope it's your two. Um, we actually had um, an, it, it, our, our teacher specialists, it's about like the, the third column from the bottom. We're over $1,632 and that's a, a combination of we received $3240 more in Title I, but then we also had to, we did not budget someone stepping to Step 20. So 48.73, so it negated to a, a 16, a negative of 16,000. Um, 1,600. 1,600, right? uh, $32.42. <laughs> um, if you go up one from that, our classroom teachers, we, we overbooked um, a longevity. So that was $6,000, so that's to the good. Yeah. Um, and then the other 750 that's sitting there is the second payment of the head teacher stipend. Um, Were you referring to that? Uh, that's line, um, it's above, it says t salaries, classroom teachers, mm -hmm. and there's 6,750 available. Mm -hmm. 6,000 is freed up to okay. cover the 1630, and the 750 is to pay the second half of the head teacher. Okay. Um, if we go to page five. So wait, uh, I didn't follow. So there's the 6,750, and you're saying 6,000 will go Six thousand is freed up, so we can use it some okay, for okay, some okay. of our, some of the shortages I'm going to talk about. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. And seven fifty will go to the. It's, it, right, and then um, occupational therapy. If we stay on page two for a second, mm -hmm. there was a change in the hiring personnel, so we've got a savings there of sixty eight seventy eight. And then, if you go to page five, we've got some overages uh, that we have to take care of. Uh, um, if you look at our SPED transportation, it looks like we're going to be short 6,933, um, well, 9,729, and that's on the top of page five. <coughs> then we have the fuel savings from the regional transport for the regular transportation of 2795.51. So we're going to be short there 6,933.41. Um, mm. Right below that, there's the new allocation for the food service director of 5304 that was unbudgeted uh, and then if you move down i'm conservatively saying that there could be eight thousand three hundred and thirty three dollars open in the heating fuel if i use if i if i say we're going to use the exact same amount of oil we did last year there'll be a savings of eight thousand to help us offset this um, um, so it, with all those pluses and minuses coming out, oh, and there is one other big one on page six, uh, the second one, building testing. We have been trying to pull out our testing and inspections away from our building repair because our building repair number is only um, $18,000. And we've got $12,000 of fire alarm testing, bug spraying. So that leaves us $6,000 to fix the building. It's not enough. So we've been trying to pull that out and we're gonna be requesting it to be its own line item in this upcoming budget. 
because it, we just don't have enough money to run the building, especially if something goes wrong. Um, and knock wood, Conway had some issues with, uh, with pipes freezing and, and we were good here, but you never know when something's gonna happen. Um, so with all those ins and outs and overages, um, I think we're, right now we're gonna be about $4,300 short, but I'm not concerned because bank can control that spending um, in some of these other accounts and we'll, we should be okay for the year. But these are the ones I'm watching. Question? Yes. Um, on page two, you mentioned a couple of items that were what I would call surplus at this point. Mm -hmm. um, it struck me there was a third one, and maybe that's not the case for it. Um, so you mentioned were the classroom teachers 60, total of 6,700, and I think the OT 6,800, but between them there's something, SPED teachers 7,100, is that? Yeah, I'd have to look into that. that. That did not catch my eye, so I will have to look and see why we're... Um, because I assume there you've, you've you know, extended the expenses that you assume for the rest of the year on that, like you do with the teachers in general. No, what, uh, I'm going to have to look at that because that could have been, um, we switched out our speech, we switched out our speech teacher and our SPED teacher on a grant so that we can claim it on some other areas and I think that's, but I don't know why it would be showing as a positive seven one, um, but so I will check into that and, and get back to you. Okay, and then on on uh, page three, I'm just curious about with the subs as to whether that seems to be. Um, you know, under control or not, because we posted a whole bunch of expenses this month. Mm -hmm. Well, we're right. we still have thirteen thousand dollars, thirteen thousand eight eighty six left. Right, we posted ten and a half, ten and a half thousand for. Well, we right now we have some, we have somebody out. We have a long we have a teacher out ill, so we're gonna we have a long term sub in there for them. And so, is that thirteen thousand then? Sufficient, or is that going to be a question? It, that's, yeah. It's hard to tell and, until we get through. I mean, most of the time it's the winter is when our teachers fall ill. We don't anticipate any more. We actually, we had two long-term illnesses, an IA and a teacher. And and um, it's coming to a close as well, so it's not extending too much longer. Okay, so you don't think it's an issue? No. Okay, thank you. Um, I just had a question, and obviously I don't know the ins and outs here, but for the item there on the food service director, um, I had always I had thought that all food service uh, stuff was processed through the revolving fund. Well, the revolving fund is negative, and that's some, and it's been that way. Uh, what we what what district wide we've been losing money, so the school committee, the school committees voted to jointly hire one food service director. So we will reflect those costs when we report the costs to the, to the Department of Education of Nutrition, but the budget is going to um, hold the money because the account is in the deficit, and it can't be. And so I've, are things being done to take care of the fact that it's in a deficit? Yes. Mm -hmm. Such as? We, we just finished hiring a consultant. We have a brand new district-wide um, food service director. We've got new, we've been using new menus. Um, there's been, uh, we've we reduced our staffing costs. So I have to pull together all the numbers yeah. to see where there's, we are right there's now. There's a much tighter control over ordering as, as, as well. Um, and, uh, you know, there's been surveys sent out to students our, our students, each month, students are helping to design the menu um, to increase uh, participation. And, it's, and there's been a lot of positive changes. Do you expect by the end of the year that the program will not be in deficit? I don't think it's going to be a one-year fix, no. It wasn't a one-year fix to get us into the deficit. I don't uh, think it's what sort of number are we talking about? Fix. Pardon me? What sort of number are we talking about? Um, I don't have that with me. Roughly. 
I, I have five scrolls. It's hard for me to pull a number out of the air. <coughs> Remember that Sunderland was this and Conway was this, and I don't have that. I can get the information for you. I just don't have it with me right now. Last year we had a bad debt and a loss of ten thousand two hundred dollars. Right, that's what I was going to say. That's what I remembered was right. like around ten thousand. But that's a combination of bad debt and loss. And loss. Right. We have upped, um, we have actually enhanced our billing uh, so that parents are more aware. So we're able to, with the new system that we went to Meals Plus, Meals Plus we're able to generate bills more often. We can actually generate them weekly so that the parents can see actually how much they owe and what they need on their account. A lot of what we call bad debt is is just that parents aren't you know aware as often as they could be and when they finally become aware of what's owed it's all it's become a very large number so now we're able to contact the families more often and i don't know if they do it every week or every two weeks but we're sending home that information a lot more effectively than we have been and that's a new thing that was brought in this year with the consultant so. Because I, I mean, the, the idea of the revolving fund is that basically, you, you know, you, you match your income with your expenses, and it, then it's, that's the way the program is paid for. And well, traditionally, that seems like that's not happening. programs in schools, pretty much everywhere, they're not. Right, right. and I, but I also I read in the paper sometimes of schools that get deep, deep, deep in the hole about their food service operations. And we don't. So um, the law changed three years ago. Right. Up to three years ago, we could run the account in the deficit. And the town, um, but now if, we, if the account is in the deficit, it reduces the town's um, free cash. So we have to make it right from our budget. But this is not something that's unique to Sunderland. It's not something that's unique to Union 38. It's not mm -hmm. something that's unique just to Franklin County. It's, it, this is, across Massachusetts and all the states. When they change the food regulations, the cost of the food has gone up, the prices of the food, so we have to charge more, <coughs> and so participation is down. They change the way that they um, do free and reduced lunches, so people are missing free and reduced by, by dollars, and so then they bring their lunch. Um, and it's just been, it's nationwide, it's an issue. And I, and I don't have the numbers off the top of my head, at, but at our last, school council meeting, um, the new service director uh, shared some of the numbers and for each month this year we've been in a positive. So it's, it's trending in the right direction. But just o overall, um, the, uh, the amount that we were in the red is going to take a little while to But catch we're up. not digging a hole any deeper. No. Correct. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you could pro provide an update on the actual numbers on that. So that I can. Because it seems to me this is you know, it, it's. I understand what you're saying about the difficulties of the of the realities of the situation, but it's still. You know, we ought to be doing the best we can to try and get that thing so that we're at least not operating, not not having a deficit that's taking money away from other things we're doing in the building. I, I mean, I think we could have a <laughs> we could have a significant agenda item, and we've done it in the past. Just you know, just on this because it is a tricky issue. I mean, we, we uh, you know, we want to make sure, obviously, that kids are well fed uh, and it's one of the, you know, biggest things we can do for them, actually, in terms of uh, helping them succeed in their education and, and, and you know, and then so for, and families to be able to afford that. And, uh, you know, at the same time, we got, we have, you know, we have to, um, you know, if we're trying, you know, we, I think we have to decide are we going to really try and fund it out of what we're charging, or are we going to acknowledge that maybe uh, it's worth putting something in the budget that offsets, uh, um, you know, some of it uh, because it's a priority? Uh, and you know, I just, but I don't think we're going to solve that. No, today, but, but I think, but I agree I, about I, getting I, some more information, and then maybe. And, and I hear what you're saying, but I'm just it, if we decide that's the way we want to go, it ought to be by design and not by absolutely you know, stumble into something. Agreed. Okay. Totally. And but yeah, let's maybe uh, in the spring. We usually do. We do. That we form. do do it. Tend to yeah, look at it. In the, I mean, I know I, I was watching a video when you went over the 
setting the new price about a year ago yeah. this mm -hmm. time, and so there was a discussion then, and it, if I remember correctly, there was the feeling that that was going to last for a couple of years, the prices you set there. And, you know, it's obviously, it's, like you say, every time you raise the price, you wonder who you're cutting out of. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. It's, it's absolutely a consideration. But and the only reason we're raising the price is because we can't charge less than what, this, what the government gives us right. for a free meal. Right. So we're, we're I, and we may be coming to you this year to ask for an increase. If it's not this year, it's definitely next year because it's going to be creeping back up again. Right. Okay. I think I just got one more on on uh, page six. There was just a zero item on retirement, and that's because I'm assuming that uh, you know, obviously, there's none that you know about. But is there any that are sort of like, well, maybe something's going to happen that you know about that you know hasn't made it onto a budget sheet, but. No, no retirements that we're aware of, and um, for it to impact the FY19 budget, they have to let the superintendent know um, by March, no, excuse me, by October. September, I think, 30. End of September. So you're yeah. saying their retirement is too late at this point for something to impact the 18 budget? The 19, the 19, budget. The 19, budget. Even, the 19 budget. Even the 19 budget. Even the 19 budget. Yeah. 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 Okay. When do they have to? I'd have to look at the, the contract, year before, like September 30th of the year before. At least 18 months. So if, right, if, 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 if a teacher is retiring at the end of the school year, they would have to communicate in writing, and I don't know the exact date, by the end of September of this school year to so, receive. So like right nine months before their retirement. Correct. Yeah, mm -hmm. otherwise it would go on the following <coughs> budget. Mm -hmm. I have. It's not. It's. No, I just. It just. You don't like surprises, and that's. Yeah. Well, we try to budget. We yeah. need to. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think it's yeah. not September of the year that they're leaving. It's September of the year before they're leaving, so that we can prepare the. Budget. So like a year and a half in advance. That's yeah. what I. It's almost a year. Yeah. But then you really do have time to budget for it. And right, because we're because then assuming we're in the fall. December to December, getting ready for the FY like this year 19 budget. So I guess that's the logic. Right. You've got nothing in the 19. It's also a zero in the 19 budget. So obviously. Right. Right. Notice of intent to retire is required by October 1st of the year preceding the year in which the benefit payment shall be made. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. I got one more question. Um, early childhood, page nine. Jumped out from there and I was wondering if you could explain a lot of the, looks like a lot of negatives. <clears throat> well, we went, I, we had a budget last year for a program that was just starting. So there, we only budgeted at the time the $30,000 for a teacher. And now we have a full day program and we have lots of revenue coming in. And Ms. McCarthy has been utilizing that money uh, because we had to have an extended day coordinator um, and we need subs and we need instructional assistance. Um, so we've been using the tuition, which you don't see listed here, um, to cover these. We've got about $90,000 in revenue that we didn't so anticipate bringing in. Well, in additional revenue. 60. We have about 60 grand of additional revenue okay. coming in because the program went full day. If you remember previously, we ran two half day programs. We are now running two full classes of full day early childhood. Thank you. So that's more offset. And there'll be you'll see the budget for next year in the budget document that we look at tonight. And that's a revolving fund, correct? Yes, it is. Okay. So, but that money that is the surplus will then be available in next year's budget. For the early childhood. For the early childhood, mm -hmm. correct. Mm -hmm. if, if I can just return to that food service thing, because there was I remember there was a fairly oh, big yeah. issue at the meeting, and it was well we had one person retire. And then we brought a consultant, and really, is that consultant worth all that they? The, uh, uh -huh. And uh, yeah, I, I remember sort of pushing back on everybody, saying, "Oh, let's uh, give people a chance to say, okay, what's what's coming in? It's not just what went out. What's coming in, and then balancing stuff." Um, and I do recall that that yeah, we were going to get back at some point. Do we want to pick a, like a like May or some put a stake in the ground and say, well, at this meeting we'll have an update on. Uh, we're hearing that things are trending up 
Right? Do you want to just pick a... Mm -hmm. I can do... I, I, I'm thinking, you know, February... I was thinking March would be a good month because okay. uh, by then our budget is pretty much not going to change anymore mm -hmm. because we've, we've had a meeting, we've had a second meeting, we've met with the town, we'll get direction from them. So at that point I can like just focus on pulling our lunch numbers together because it's not just, you know, like Ben said, she, um, Mary was giving out numbers and it's not just dollars and cents. We want to look at the participation. Yeah. Is our participation rate? Right. <coughs> right. Yeah, yeah, all that. And, and, the, and we want to look at those matrix that, that the consultant told us we were out of whack meal per service hour. And we're now, we're calculating those things. So I, I want to be able to show you the whole package. I'm I, thinking March might be a good time for that. Okay. I threw May out there to give you some space between the budget stuff and that, but if you can pull it in March, then we yeah, can do I think it in March. we can do it for March. Okay. Yeah, that would be great. Because I'd like to, if there's an issue, we can stop it in March rather than yeah, yeah. wait until May. Yeah. But I appreciate your thinking. But my thinking is if we're off track, I'd rather rather know in March than in May. Sounds good. Okay. Thanks. Uh, any other questions or comments on the financial report? All right. Thank you. Um, public comment? Any comments, <laughs> questions? Or? Okay. Um, all right, then uh, moving on to, uh, we have no unfinished business. So new business, and it's the uh, presentation of the proposed FY19 budget. Okay, so I put a copy for each of you at your table. Um, this is what we would call version one. So the first page is just the introduction, you know, the cover page, and then we have all the uh, our elementary, all our people that are on the school committee um, listed on the second page. Um, so the first page of the budget is um, one of 24, and this is a page that we added last year, student and staff data sheet. Um, so this is, um, I, I really, Dr. Carey brought us this sheet, and I really love this sheet because it gives mm -hmm. us a great snapshot. Um, so this year on the left, October 1st census, and this is what our funding is based on, we had 238 children and 40 of them were on IEPs. And that 40 is inside that 238. So then projecting down, I just took all of our current children and moved them up a grade. And the kindergarten number at 16 is the number that I got from Ms. McCarthy the, of the number of kids in our current program that she knows is going to kindergarten. Um, have you start, ben, have you started your kindergarten enrollment? We've started the registration process and we're actually we're at 28. So you're, we're at 28 now? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, well we'll change that. So would you keep me... Um, Sunderland continues to buck the trend. So yes, it does. Would the uh, special education number be the same? If it could go up, we don't know because these kids will have to, these kids would get tested if they haven't been in our preschools. We would do a screening. Uh, when will we do screening? It's in the spring. In the spring. It's in May. What yeah. Okay, so then that's what we are looking at there. On the right is our staffing. Um, and you can see right now um, in the budget that we're proposing, we are going to be proposing. <clears throat> proposing a new position called an ECI, and we're going to talk about that when we get into the budget. Um, we had a flip between two uh, instructional, we didn't have a, a new hire, but two, a flip between classroom and special ed. There was a change of two. And our occupational therapist in, in, increased 0.1. So there's a net change of 1.10 in our teaching positions in this budget. And on the bottom um, are our teacher credentials. These are the columns in our budget. So we have eight teachers with bachelor's degrees, two, three with bachelor's plus 15, 14 with master's, four with master's plus 15, five with master's plus 30, and two with master's plus 45 or CAGS. So as you can see, the majority of our staff is master's and above, which is very, good for the school. Um, the next page is our summary of changes. So we start with what we, and this is just for the town appropriation. 
Um, our FY18 town appropriation was $2,488,338. Uh, the cost of the collective bargaining agreement steps is $21,491. Uh, the negotiated increase is 2.5%, costing $39,198. We have people who had degree changes, totaling $4,042. We had new longevities of $6,250. We have an allowance for now union salaries of $4,016. And we have a decrease for um, a new higher savings of $13,234. And that was the uh, OT and some changes in our um, IA staff that provided that amount. Um, operational increases, regional transportation will go up $775. That's not in determined yet because it's a CPI uh, consumer price index um, based on the uh, consumer price index. And last time I looked, they did not have December posted and it's a year to year change. So that could change a little bit more. Um, somewhere along the line, we lost our field trip money, so we have to put that back in for $1,490. Um, SPED support services needs to increase $2,032. Technology, software, and hardware will increase $5,868. Uh, every summer, uh, we have students here that participate in reading camp, and that needs to be budgeted at $6,500. Uh, we, were, we would be looking to add 15000 for our, that line item building security and testing. Um, SPED transportation is going to increase $14,500. Uh, there are some decreases but in telephone of $1,700. Uh, SPED testing and evals will go down $2,000. Uh, the building copier cost will go down $2,090. And the decrease in central office uh, percentage will save us $9,452 for a total net change of an increase of 92,686 or an increase of 3.72% and it would bring us to a total um, appropriation of 2,581.24 and 24 cents at 24 cents and 24 dollars. Um, I believe tomorrow the budget is dropping. Um, tonight is the state of the state uh, address and I believe that we will get our numbers from Desi tomorrow. As you know in the past couple years we've had some large increases because we have to meet net school spending so I don't we'll have, we have to wait until those numbers drop to see if this 2.5 million is sufficient um, pages 3 of 24 through uh, Um, through 11 of 24 is the detailed line items for that summary that I just read you so that you have time to go you can look at each of the line items at your leisure to see what's going up and what's going down and you'll see the FY17 actual numbers the budgeted 18 numbers and what we're proposing for 19 and the difference in the change um, starting on page 12 we're looking at all our funds so um, Page 12, um, we start with the FY19 proposed. So just to be, make sure I understand, so three through 11 is just what would come from, from the, town. the town appropriation. Correct. So it, it might not be the total cost of that line item if, it, if funds and are coming from where you're Right, so this 12. gives us the clearer picture of, all, of what we're really okay. spending on each line item. Right, right, okay. So on page 12, there's nothing. On page 13, there's nothing because we got to wait till we get to the because page 14. So school choice. Um, you can see we're at, we'll add 196,581 dollars for classroom teachers, um, 10,000 dollars for specialists. Um, uh, they will provide 270,184 dollars for um, IAs. And then moving over to early childhood, uh, early childhood will we'll add three, thirty thousand dollars to our teachers, fifteen thousand to our um, teacher specialists, and then the sped revolving would uh, add fifteen thousand to our specialists, 
and 78,669 for our speech, PT, and OT. And then they will also pay for 73,359 of IAs. Title I is 15,806, which offsets one of our teachers' um, salaries. And in the SPED 94142 grant, we have one teacher at 55,953. Uh, we have a specialist at 33,689. So if you look, um, if you look at just the town appropriation, you would think we were only spending $724,877 for teachers. But here, the total cost is $1,007,411. So that's why we need to look at all of our, 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 our funding sources. Um, on the next page, there's $5,000 coming from school choice. That's for our ESL tutors. Um, because we do have a lot of um, English language learners in this building. And I believe that that is all we have for that. Everything else should be the same. So if you look at page 20 of 24, The total we will spend in, in FY19 is $3,376,307. And what we're asking the town for, the $2.5 million, represents about 76% of the money that we're going to be spending. Um, school choice is at 14%. The early childhood is at one, a little over 1%. Sped revolving is almost 5%. Title I is almost half a percent. And the 94-142 is about 2.66%. Um, so if we look at the next page, this is our school choice. And this is very concerning to me because, um, as you know, um, not last year, the year before, we started spending a year. We stopped spending a year in arrears, and it was a year in arrears plus half of what we were getting. Well, now we're like spending everything. So we're gonna, we only, at the end of, of 19, we're only gonna have about $1,922 left in, in the fund. So we, we are, this, we are sucking we this dry. Can we cut it finer, Patty? <laughs> it, it, it makes me nervous. It, it yeah. just, it, yeah. it really makes me nervous. Yeah, okay. Can you run, uh, just walk us sure. through that so, quick? On the left, um, we, this is what we projected in our budget, that we would begin the year with a negative balance of 261,955, meaning that we were spending part of the um, 817 revenue um, already. Um, the revenue came in, we were thinking at 349, so we would have available to spend 87,132. We actually spent 425, 493. And our projected end in balance would be 338, 361. That's what we budgeted. If you look to the right, what's actually happening is we didn't start as bad as we thought. Um, instead of being 261 negative, we were 224. Our revenue came in at 390. So projected available balance was 166, 203. Um, our recommended uses are down um, by about 12,000 to 413, 206. So our projected ending balance is 247.03. And so we start with that, and now our projected uh, revenue that we got in December is back down to 340.172. And the difference, um, like right now they're telling us it's 340, it's because they don't count the SPED increments until June. So we don't know. So we've, we've got to go with the numbers they gave us in December. Come June, um, Ms. Ferrandino uh, will fill out SPED increment forms on the school choice, and then we will get more money. So if we have a school choice child who is uh, on an IEP, the costs of that IEP are reimbursed to us through our through school choice. But so only part. in the following fiscal year. It'll come in June. So that'll be. I guess I didn't understand the schedule you said as to when we bill for these. Cost. June, and so they'll adjust our June payment. Okay. So likely that 340 is going to go up. Yes. So do we, do we not have a sense like uh, num number? Uh, well, well, we thought it was 349, and it came and in at 390. 390, right? Yeah. Okay. As of, so I mean, somewhere in the 
Yeah. Ballpark. Okay. Correct, correct me if I'm wrong, because I wasn't here, but I was just, again, trying to educate myself. And what I'm recollecting seeing is that a year ago, when you're talking about the budget, there was basically the same concern that you just expressed a moment ago about how you are depleting this because mm -hmm. you are spending more than one year's worth you know, in a year, mm -hmm. and that you were not looking forward to where we are right now because you were going to be 100,000 worse off. Mm -hmm. And there was extensive discussion about that mm -hmm. at the public hearing, I believe, with various parties. And, um, <coughs> That doesn't seem to have happened, and I'm just, is that because of why? You're, I mean, am I making any sense? You are, but uh, so, I mean, if, if you direct me to say we're going to move those classroom teachers onto the budget, and instead of asking the town for an increase of 92000 we're going to ask for 192000 No, I'm, I'm not, that's, I'm not expressing myself well. Um, I'm just curious how it, it seems to me that we have ended the year, if I look at the cash balance in the bottom part of this page on the left, if I look at the cash balance as of 7-1-2017, uh, the first line is 166000 mm -hmm. If I look at the cash balance at the end of, uh, uh, projected the end of this year, it's 143000 mm -hmm. only dropped by 25000 Okay, the conversation going through the budget process was that that number was going to drop down to 34,000. Okay, it's only shown here as dropping down to 143,000. I was coming in here thinking it doesn't matter how good these guys do for putting a tight budget together, you're $100,000 in the hole just because of the conversation that took place at this time last year. Well, we're not in the hole because we're still... We no, still because you're but on a comparison year to year because right. last year you would have used a whole chunk of this, you know, <coughs> we're, we're basically using up the... Well, you can see it so in the, you so can see it in right. so in the balance. So what I'm saying is if these are not expenses that are luxuries, these are necessities. So if we have to take them off school choice, they have to go on to the town appropriation. And that is what I started talking to the school committee about last year, that some of these salaries need to move over, but that would mean asking the town for more money. And then we had the conversation with the town about the, the override and it, it failed. Okay. So we're, we're right back in the same situation. I'm not making myself clear. Uh, I, wait, wait, I, I think we, I understand. We have, we have moved. We, we basically still have the problem, but somehow we've managed to delay it a year. Yes. And it's exactly what we said at, in the meetings. Uh, uh, I mean, not exactly, but that, well, I think the, what the, I heard, the ending watching, balance of $1,921.55 in school choice right. makes the point. That's The point was, uh, at the again, it. 12 months ago, right. similar conversations, okay, that, that the number on the bottom line was, was 34000 Basically the same thing, meaning nothing. Okay, going forward, and therefore putting together, it was like, yeah, we can get through this budget, but I really don't want to be around when we have to deal with the 2019 budget because we're not going to be able to rob more than one year. You know, what they would use more than one year of school choice because my understanding is for the past one, two, three, four, whatever it's been, we've been using one and a quarter years of school choice or one and a half years because when we switched from don't spend any of it until the following year. Mm -hmm. So now we're moving to spend it all in the right. current year. Okay. And, a lot and I thought I thought the conversation a year ago was that basically we we're using up the last of I, this. I, I understand exactly what you're saying. And I'm and I'm making sense or not? You're, you're making sense. Uh, as someone who was in on all, all the conversations and and heard you know the stuff in the halls and uh, we really wanted to get the override last year. Right. Because that would save us but the town was able to absorb whatever we were able to get through and we're here where we are this year mm -hmm. but as i understand it this is a year where you know we'll see where the numbers come down but it feels like long term uh what the town is taking in and what they're spending is kind of going like this you know the, the but did we end up better than expected with the school choice numbers because we took in more school choice money or because we used less school choice money? Some of both. Bit of both. 
but mostly we took inward. I mean, looking at it, that 349 went to 390, so that's 40. But that added. was, that's and was that because we, we got more, we got more spend money came through? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and then, and then, and then it looks like, we spent twelve thousand. We spent twelve thousand less, and the the ending balance also was thirty, you know, some to the better than we initially anticipated. Okay, I, so I'll yeah, add all that up. I mean, I'm pleasantly surprised. I'm just yeah. a bit baffled. And it, but it still is not a pretty picture, even even Agreed. with that. Even if even if it. Because you're, looking, you're still looking a year out and thinking we got. Problem. It can't happen because you see right. it. You see the ending balance actual. Ending balance for 2018 at 247 minus you know you know basically a year uh, in you know paying out of the current year which is like Patty opened up is not what you want to do you want to basically be spending out of the previous year maybe a little bit out of the current year 247 out of the current year jumping up to 388 out of the current year well 388 out of what we're anticipating to maybe you know bring in. I mean, if it's 390 this year in that ballpark, I mean, we're, we're cutting it finer than we, that is, then probably even for this year is, is, I'm not, I'm not yeah, I don't, I mean, cause you, you know, one, you know, we're off by one student or one spend and we're, we're in the negative. Yeah. I think we're all worried about the sort of tipping point effect too, where if we have kids choice and charter out, uh, especially kids with special needs, you know, it's, working out better financially for us to, to take care of what we can in the town and even potentially have kids uh, choice. I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not disputing what you're doing in the yeah. slightest, okay? I'm just wondering, I'm just yeah. still somewhat yeah. baffled how the numbers turned up way better than I thought they were going to be. Yeah, and, and that's part and of that, and, and that's not saying yeah. they're going to be way better a year from now yeah, because yeah. it's still the same problem, but how we basically but, bought another year. But that's, that's the thing about a tipping point is, it, you know, it can swing very rapidly with a relatively small tap. And you have, I mean, the, the part of school choice money that comes in is the straight 5000 <coughs> is very straightforward, okay? Uh, the, the, I assume the harder part is the SPED payback because you don't know, I mean, do you have a good idea as you go through the year how that number is going to work, I assume? We, we collect we collect the data and we put it You're in the spreadsheet. Oh. I, I, I'm the special ed director, and he was watching me go, and I was just laughing at <laughs> his response to me. So. Okay. I, so, I apologize if I don't know something. No, you're sure. making perfect sense. It was. I, okay. I, 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 I'm sorry to interrupt the proceeding, yeah. but I can answer as well. But so we ought to have a good. I mean, at what point, when it comes to decision time on a budget meeting in the next month or two? Do we at that point have a good handle on what the sped number is, the sped it's increment is going to be for the year? You can, yeah, you do I, it. So. I, I think, uh, hi, nice to meet you. I'm Karen Ferrandino, the director, I'm Peter. Of the, the director of special education. Your question makes perfect sense to me. Okay. So thank you. And I think I think the answer to your question is and said it, it is a combination of both a decrease during the year of the funding that we take out to, from school choice, mm -hmm. but it's also it's very difficult to know uh, what we call the school choice spend increment forms. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, to, like you said, we get 5,000 for every student, mm -hmm. and then every student that has an IEP, I sit in April, mm -hmm. and I take what we call the grid services of the IEP and I plug them into a uh, formula that the department offers. Mm -hmm. And and that money gets generated, it shows how much that would cost. So for instance, simple one, if a child has like an instructional assistant on the grid, it shows how many hours they would have it, it shows how much the department takes from the sending school to the receiving school, multiplies it by the number of hours for the year for that amount of money per hour, and they, they, ain't, they give a sped increment form. And a lot of times it's, they, they, guesstimate how much that increment is going to be if a student has been in this district for a while, they might do something, but sometimes it pops up that uh, a student may have an additional service for a period of time. So that gets thrown on in there and it increases, increases your school choice revenues. But obviously you also got expenses for providing the services. <coughs> but the, 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 a lot of times the expenses for the services are, are coming from our budget. Mm -hmm. 
are, are already built in. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're absolutely correct. Sometimes if a child comes in with something as extreme as a one-to-one -one assistant, we might actually have to go out and hire that one-to-one -one assistant, but then we do not get that reimbursement until June. That gets really complicated. Are you allowed to bill for indirect costs as well as direct services? And remember, we're not invoicing directly. The money is taken from the state out of the Chapter 7. Right, but service. you're providing data to the state to know how much they're supposed to take out. Correct, yes. And, and, uh, uh, and consultation services as well as how about, only special education services. Right, but for example, uh, as far as you know, the cost of providing these services to the child takes up some of your time. No, I can't. You can't build, no, that's what I mean by indirect services. The direct specialized instruction that's on an IEP, no administrative cost or anything. You can't, you can't do any administrative cost? No, just directly the services on the student's individualized education plan. And are the rates at which they reimburse for like a, uh, an aid, are they comparable to what we actually spend on an aid? Not bad. In some instances, it depends what the service is, some of them are Reasonably closer. close? Reasonably close. Okay. And, and we want to just add there too, you have to remember sometimes we are already using the structures and supports that are here. So we have efficiency. You know, so it's the right. same, it's the special education teacher that we would have had whether, whether that child is here or not. Right. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. A couple questions. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so we had the same conversation last year and my thoughts, I'm not necessarily, I think, as adept at the numbers. Um, but we can't go on spending like we have been. So I would just, um, why does, just to get an understanding, the classroom teachers' expenditure go from 182 to 196. Do we hire more or is there the salary as well? Steps. Okay. And is that the same thing? increases and degree changes. And then that, is that the same thing for the instructional assistants? Yes. So part of what I'm thinking is that we start, we have to start moving some of this onto the general budget. Correct. And I don't think we can do it all in just one fail Correct. swoop. We and have they to didn't want us to do it last year. Right. They tried to do it on the ride and it failed. And we're in the same position because of work. So if we move some of these classroom teachers over, we're already asking for a 3.72% increase. Now we're maybe asking for maybe a five or six percent increase, and that and you know they're gonna yeah. have to say that there's gonna need to be an over for that. Um, I think it would be. I just feel like it would be responsible for us to come in with that at first, for the town to know exactly like what the reality is. I think we can present them like either way, whether we present them this or we present them on the tire, but have the discussion for sure right. out in the open about. What we'd really like to do is, you know, not be cutting our school choice right. uh, this fine uh, and start moving it, like you said, to the town appropriation. Um, uh, tell yeah. us what you think, you know, with the them and the, and the finance. Right. And, I, and I don't have the, the numbers locked down, but I think that the increase over the last several years has been extremely low. And we can't keep doing that year after year after year after year. Go well, back to... Especially compared to the, the increase in enrollment in the school. Right, and then just the right. simple because fact our that... Because our remember, our kids are coming back. We don't have a lot of room for choice kids. Right. So right. Our, our choice revenue is decreasing right. because we're, we're not taking in as many choice kids because the room is already filled with Sunderland kids. Right, and then I go back to the simple fact that when you close the doors in June and you open up in September, it's more expensive to run the building. And we've almost just kept the budget just at that. It's been so low that we're just covering the cost of the following year rather than the expenses that we really do have to pay. And it might be uh, prudent of us um, to start moving some of that. And I, I was, I think I agree with Peter, I was pleasantly surprised when I looked at the, just the big number 3.7, I was like, wow, this is actually really- I'm shocked. I'm, I'm stunned. I was looking at, we're gonna be asking eight, nine, ten, and it's gonna be language that I want to use in the public forum. Um, but I think it would be responsible for to, to start at moving some of it over, chipping away at it, and, and then seeing where we can go from there, at least having the conversation. Okay, so what would you like me to, would you like me to move something over before I send this to the town? Because 
to, uh, the town has asked that we that we send it to them tomorrow morning after you guys have looked at it. I don't want to put you through the ringer tonight, but I think it would be better for us to send it to them uh, with the higher asking for the, the higher one than then later on down the road. So and actually, we want. To let me just give you an idea. If we move the three classroom teachers that are in in school choice. That would equal $148,604, and it would make our increase 9.7%. So this, the, the, the 196 581 represents three teachers? Uh, it represents more, but there's three classroom three teachers. Classrooms. So okay. what could we do to at least bring that number in below the 182? Well, that's what I'm asking. How, how, how far do you want to go? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Why? Go, you go ahead. Happy talk about well, <laughs> I have a question about the ECI. You said we were going to talk about that, yes. but we didn't, and I don't know what it is. Okay, so the ECI is a new position, um, and that's adding 10000 We're going to fund that with $10,000 of school choice funds. So, Mr. Barshevsky, do you want to start sure. the ECI conversation and have Ms. McCarthy help uh, as needed? Yeah, yeah gl gladly. Um, what we've seen since the 2011-2012 school year, we've had a 30% increase in our student population. Spend numbers have mirrored that increase. So 30% more students, we've had 30% more special education students. Um, the early childhood interventionists would be providing both academic, behavioral, and emotional, um, uh, <coughs> emotional supports and social supports for students in grades pre-K through two. It would be a combination position of um, pushing classroom teaching, pull-out services, training um, early childhood teachers and instructional ass uh, assistants through a coaching model um, for differentiation. Uh, this person would act as another liaison, an additional liaison, special education liaison for um, students in grades pre-K through to as, as well. And what we find that um, early, obviously early intervention is key, and the more academic support and social emotional support that students have at an earlier age increases their overall success. And decreases spending later. And, and decreases services and, and spending later. So I think Currently, we, we have um, been stretching very thinly. Um, we have a program for um, comprehensively disabled students, and the person that works that program, which brings in tuition from other districts, is being stretched to deal with all kinds of other issues. So some of these children in the early childhood program, as I said last year, are coming diagnosed with very serious disabilities, not just naughty, but really serious disabilities in their ability to cope, their ability to control their emotions, to the, their ability to communicate with us. So we find that we need more, um, more support in that area to be able to put the support back in the, we have a, a, a program where tuition and students come and we need to put that, balance that back with the person that's been spread thin. And, and, and uh, am I clear on that? Or? Yes, I mean, <clears throat> this school committee and the school district supported the expansion of preschool. So we've really gone from um, taking minimal tuition in to now having 1% of your budget, which is very cool, and it's, it's a lot of money. And so <coughs> just after our first year, and we suspect that and we expect that to grow and stay throughout the time. And funding from the early childhood parent tuition will go to offset part of this salary. And hopefully we can continue to grow that way. And as Dr. Carey said, it's imperative that we have this. We, right now we have 14 kids with IEPs in our preschool classrooms total. We have classrooms. Um, and we really want to set it up so that we can support and shift their needs and um, the early intervention and really prevention. It's a preventative model that we're looking to do that's supported through 
parent funded tuition through our revolving account, special education revolving account, a little bit through school, um, school choice money, and a little bit through grant money. So, um, If I can just add, for those of you uh, that I spoke with five years ago when uh, we saw an increase in need and we realized that we already had one student out, uh, tuitioned out, and we were about to have a second student tuitioned out, is when this came to the school committee and we decided to put our resources into the school. And since that time, we have absolutely no students in Sunderland out of district. Um, what we're starting to realize, we call that Horizons. Uh, and we developed a program to meet the needs of students with intensive needs so we can keep them here in the building and not send them out to a, a tuitioned out school. Uh, what is happening now is that teacher that is supposed to be working with your students with intensive needs is going into the classrooms and working uh, in K through two mostly because between K and two, you have 27 students on IEPs. So if you add the 14 students, in pre-K and the 27 in K through two, we needed to take our intensive needs teacher and just have her start working in the classrooms, leaving our intensive needs kids uh, kind of lacking. Uh, and that becomes a concern because, uh, for a number of reasons. So what Dr. Carey is trying to say, is we, it has said, is we would like to have that teacher go back to really being able to work in that intensive needs classroom. And so that ECI, would not just be working with the preschool, but would be working with our teachers in the early elementary school to really get those interventions into place. So she'll be, he or she, will be working with the 27 students on IEPs K through two, as well as helping in the preschool. This year alone, because of the needs in the preschool, we did contract with a, uh, an outside agency mm -hmm. to help us do um, ABA. Uh, working with our number of students that we have on the autism spectrum, and that money we used the special edu grant, education grant for, and it was at a cost of thirteen thousand dollars. So what I was saying is, there's a, what we're saying is, there's a way we can do this position without really affecting your local expenditure. And so we really need to, by doing it, by using this bed revolving account, your tuition's coming in from your out of district students that are in the Horizons program from your tuitions in your preschool, uh, from the money on the special education grant, and Patty, I didn't bring my notes. Um, so we have this a little, bit of, a little, bit, of a little bit of using a little bit of that school choice money to be able to pay for this, this can position. Can I ask a question? Yeah. How much, if we had to send out our students who were uh, comprehensively uh, disabled we're talking autism we're talking you know, real communication disorders real um, control self-control disorders that. how much would it cost to send one out the May Center is a hundred and ten thousand a year uh, the least expensive you probably find for a student with uh, significant needs they vary depending on the needs of the child in the program Again, the May Center that does ABA all day with your significantly impaired autistic students is 110,000. Um, a typical, uh, uh, any, I would say anywhere between 75 and $110,000. Yeah. yeah, we've been in that ballpark yeah. before in our budget, for sure. Yeah, I was gonna say the same. I mean, I think it's remarkable that you have uh, managed to treat them all, deep, provide services within the school framework here because going out is so incredibly expensive. Mm -hmm. And we're excited to bring this position, you know, one of the reasons we all came to really just be able to discuss it with um, the support that you've given the district that they've needed and recognizing that, you know, as the numbers increase and the needs have increased, that this position is going to be essential for us to kind of, to effectively and, meet the needs of students. Sustain the quality. Absolutely, and I, and I think what we can proudly say, w whether a student um, is in the general ed classroom or, or an, I, an IEP, Sunderland residents go to Sunderland Elementary School. You know, they're, they are not leaving this community to receive their education elsewhere. And that's, I mean, it's, it's just a, it's a product of, as, you know. As the, of December, we have 11 students out, 10 out on choice, one out in the same charter. Yeah. That's very small. And that's up from last year. Small percentage. Yeah. That's our numbers net right now. Yep. yep. At some point, I'd like to have a discussion on that, but I don't want to sidetrack the discussion here. So I'll, <laughs> I got, I'll I got, get to some other. I got a few questions. I just need to. 
can try to get a clear picture. Yep. So, 14, oh, first of all, when we refer to early childhood and pre-K, is that the same thing? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. And then... Early childhood, by definition, is pre-K through grade three. Just but you said, but, so but, but said, for this proposal and the, the dynamics of the children that we have in, we're looking for pre-K to grade two. Okay. And so, we could look to grade three by our standards. Okay. 27 K through 2, 14 in pre-K. So the number of 40 in the front. Four, so the, on the list here, special education, would that be IEP? Right. Yeah. So, so, right. so October 1st, there was only seven. Right. Since October 1st, another seven kids have come in. Okay, that's because what I was trying to Because you have to remember, once they turn two years, nine months, they belong to us. Right. So this is it. so October first. There was only seven. Now Kim's up to fourteen. So that's why the the, the thirteen no. That's why she's showing us like thirteen down the bottom. Okay. Um, and then I'd, I was asking questions earlier about page nine early childhood and that. But we, we talked about the funding coming in. Mm -hmm. Now does that reflected in the forty five thousand on the early childhood revolving? So if you look is? at let's look at the. Um, Page 23 of 24 is our early childhood. So last year, when we were budgeting this, we thought we'd have a beginning balance of 25,000. We thought we'd bring in 25,000 and have 50,319. 30,000 would to offset the teacher's salary, leaving us 20,319. Again, this, we like to leave a little bit of something in there in case we get a pre-K student that we can't handle here. So what actually happened is we started with 36319 Our revenue right now is projected to come in through the end of the year at 90314 So it's going to go to spend that 30000 And this is where the negatives are because now we need an extended day coordinator for 7920 We have extended day staffing at 17204 We're running parent education seminars for 1000 Substitutes, 2,000. Supplies and materials, 2,000. Travel, 500. Field trips, 250. Other expenses, 500. And then summer services, $11,000. Because we have to provide services for children so that there is no regression. So if they're, if they're, that, um, if they're that much on the spectrum, if we leave them home all summer, they will regress. So we have to provide a program. And we did that here. Uh, this past summer, and you did was that ladybug camp? Or? No, that was a reading camp. That was oh, in addition. Okay. Yeah, no, but it was it was a, a nice summer program here. First time that we done. Just as part of the story, so that, that um, actual <coughs> um, <coughs> revenue uh, of ninety. How does that compare to like the year before when we just had the two half days? Do you have a yeah. ballpark on? Like Within, this sounds like a significant. I mean, if we were projecting huge. twenty-five, it sounds like it's, it's probably a, we had a massive increase. In, right. which, yeah. Because last year at that time, the, your program was open four days a week. It was a half day. Right. I it guess two hundred and twenty a month per kid. Yeah. So it was. So we were pulling in maybe twenty-five yeah. grand at tops. Yeah. So you can see we've almost. Yeah. Well, and the other thing you have to remember with the, with the with the tuition, which is always my big worry, is Sunderland. Sunderland is our school that has the highest free and reduced lunch percentages. So we have the most parents who could qualify for sliding scale on a tuition. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I always like to caution them I to did. please, I'm gonna, I'm gonna conservatively budget. So, yep. so when Kim's looking at the 19 revenue, she's like, well, if we got 90 this year, why are you only gonna budget for 75? Well, maybe next year we're gonna have a lot of sliding scale parents and right. we don't know. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather budget the revenue conservatively. Mm -hmm. So down that list, I see the ECI teacher budget for 15. Yes, so they're going to take 15 next year. 15,000 from that money will pay for the ECI teacher. And then we're asking for another 10. So it, 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 we're, we're budgeting a master's degree at step 11, which is like $55,490. So we're taking pieces from everything. We're going to take 10,000 from choice. We're going to take 19,005 from the SPED allocation. We're going to take 15,000 from the early childhood. And 15 from SPED. And revolving. 15 from SPED revolving. To get us on that step. 
And it's a new it, it's a new hire. We may hire someone less. Right. My my immediate gut is I would prefer not to take that ten thousand for that position out of to add it on to the school choice that we're trying to drop. I know. Anyway. But we didn't have another ten, so we could right. add the ten to the town budget. What do you mean you didn't have another ten? There, where, where, we, there's nowhere else to go. Well, yeah, right. Unless, Unless going, beyond, out of, going beyond, going beyond, or take it out of the, take the extra ten out of. I mean, what did we take out of school choice? Ten, and, and this is what Mr. McFarland's saying. He'd rather, he'd rather see us not take the ten thousand out of school choice, so that would leave us a balance of about eleven thousand in school choice. But that means that we put the ten thousand on the town appropriation because there's nowhere else to go with it. Hmm. And if we added the, that ten thousand, it would increase our um, percentage to four point one three, asking for an increase of one hundred and two thousand six hundred eighty-six dollars. Well, one, one place to go would be to take an extra ten out of the early childhood. Because we're based on parent tuition and we have no projections yet, we're just in the application process. You know, I suggested to to budget the seventy-five grand for incoming tuition and I did we just need a little bit more time to do that I do think over time and and I'm real conservative this way that we would be able to increase funding out of the early childhood revolving because this is year two and a new startup program and and we're working through it I I the conservative part of me is saying that 15 grand is something that we can support comfortably for all the what ifs that can happen in early childhood because if we have one student come in that we can't handle, that has to go to an out-of-district placement, we've got $40,930 sitting there in case. And that's it. And that's it. Well, it's because it gets, to the, it gets to the same thing. I mean, we could, we could shift it from choice to there, but we're playing the same game in terms of how close we're cutting it. Correct. Yeah, and as opposed to going to, the, to trying to see if we can get it in the appropriation, uh, you know, because it's when you when you to be paid for in a responsible way. When you list ninety thousand three fourteen as actual revenue for FY eighteen, obviously we're only halfway through the year, and I'm I, I, no, that that's year end. That's that's, that's projected, projected, projected year end. Projected, bu projected budget. Will there? Is it uh, reasonable to assume there may be changes in the uh, revenue uh, other that are different than that or not? I don't oh, know how sure. fixed that is. Oh, oh, sure. People move, you know, they move, you know, sometimes people don't pay their bills and <laughs> we have to track them down. There's all kinds of variables that we have to keep a tight control on. But so if, if everybody pays their bills and they signed up for, and they contract with us for the days they're going to attend, and they, you know, they have sliding scale. They have full pay or someplace in between. That um, number is that ninety thousand. That's how you come up with that. Yeah. And it could be go higher if you if you have a couple. Do you have any more two point nines coming in between now and June? No. It, it, if it goes higher, it will be by maybe five thousand. If more people want to attend the extended day option, which is fifteen dollars an afternoon. So it, so you know so it seems like that. And and that part is taking off. And that. So what we offer here is a full day preschool program five days a week. Last year it was two half days, four days a week. And then we also add to that for working families um, extended day option, like an out of school time program, but we can't run it with the older kids mm -hmm. till 5.30 every day and the tuition is based on that. Mm -hmm. So that is calculated per family and added up based on each um, individual circumstance and that's, that 90,000 is that figure. You know, I su suggested to Patty to keep 75,000 because I know there's a lot of children coming in from other early intervention agencies that need a spot in Sunderland here. And those, we, they come in tuition free for, for our special education um, preschoolers. So I, I just need to look at it. This is the first year that we've done it. I would love it to be where we are ahead and we are paying for that ECI, you know, as much as possible. But at the beginning stages of this, I would suggest that we move forward conservatively. <coughs> so just so that we, we, we reflect back. So if, it, if once a child turns 2.9 years of age, we're responsible for their special education needs. 
So we are running this program as a special education program so that we, they, we meet their needs here and we also bring in peers. So if someone comes in and they have special needs, they're not paying tuition. Mm -hmm. Because we, so they, depend, and depending on how severe, some of them will go all day for free and then others have certain amount of hours and, they, and if they stay past those given hours, um, then they pay for those, those hours. And you're trying to get a reasonable mix of special ed and non-special ed yeah, that's right. kids. Those parents yeah. are just, you know, they, right. They and if you had trouble, we we call them typical peers. That's what I right. I, I, I thought that was the the, 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 prop, the proper language. But have you had trouble uh, we have attracting a enough? We have a waiting list in Sunderland. Um, we we build of, of the typical typicals. peers. People willing to pay to come here. We have a waiting so list. So that if <coughs> Partway through the year, a couple of people who are paying full boat, okay, move out of town. You have others that be willing to take their slot. We, we don't tap the waiting list um, at this point in January forward for young kids. Educating a young kid can be complicated. We don't have rolling admissions. We like to set up a cohort okay. to start. So if someone moved, it would be unlikely that we would fill that spot just just because of uh, how it goes and, and the health of the classroom and community at that young age. We're a mixed age integrated program, age three, four, and five year olds all in one classroom. And we really work like the Dickens to build that community sense. So, you know, it, it, we really like to build our cohort, mark the spots for the kids that we know that are coming in on IEPs from any of the early intervention agencies that we have in our areas and then work with that budget and with that group of So, so having an, a, a space vacated by no means means that you're gonna replace that with someone else until the beginning of the following year. And likely, if, if I were to replace it, it would be with some child that hasn't been identified with, um, hasn't been formally identified with developmental delays, but is an at-risk student that perhaps could not pay for that mm -hmm. process, because that, that's our due diligence, that's what we want to do, we right. want to gather those kids. And then just one other thing while we're on this, the, the ECI teacher, yeah. part of that will be dealing with the school choice children with SPED issues. Yes. Will that be chargeable off to the sending town? So that's an excellent question, and yeah. it goes back to what we're saying, so when we're talking about taking if you decide to take 10,000 off a of school choice, okay, while we have an ECBI, those services for the school choice students that he or she provides would be reimbursable. reimbursable. Right. So they'd come back mm -hmm. yes, into right. school choice. You put them in the IEP as a service that the ECI is providing, and it goes into the formula. And, and, and my understanding is it doesn't matter what number we put in the budget for how much of that person's salary is coming out of each one of these accounts. The amount that we would get reimbursed under that school choice spend reimbursement is strictly a matter of what, how many services they provided for that population of kids. Correct. That's right. Fixed the amount. Right. So we could still move the money out, not pay for it, and try to move it to the town appropriation from choice, and it's not going to affect. Won't affect. It won't affect the operation. It will not affect your reimbursable debt. Right. It has not yes. affect where it is paid for from your budget. Does not affect our reimbursement. What I'm hearing is if the program is successful, that is something that may be able to pay for itself the year after next, and then we could take it off the town appropriations going forward. Yeah, it, yeah, if we build that up. I mean, what, what if next year, you know, we pull in off 100,000 for right. change, which is a possibility, right? So, so but we, we, are, we don't have any longitudinal data to look at to, to make these projections, so we're coming in with what I know from our surrounding communities and, and making best guess in a conservative way. And has it been the consensus that this program is doing all that you hoped it would do? It's our rocking <laughs> program. The staff is divine and the family. It's really, really wonderful. Because I think, I think that when there are, because this is basically starting from, <coughs> you know, from a very small, like would you say, half a day, four days a week, to right. full, whatever. And I mean, to me, that's a real success story. And that yeah. sort of needs, people need to be aware of that because you know, a lot of times you look at the school, well, it's the same old, same old, same old, and how come they want more money to do the same thing? And if this that's... is truly amazing. I was in there Friday for an hour and a half, 
and the learning, the learning centers and the learning these kids, they, they do. The questioning, they, they really, really hit all those learning modalities and these kids are growing, they're dressing themselves, they're able to, you know, get along, they can talk about same, you know, similarities, differences, they're learning a lot of high level skills that they'll need that will actually help them and us as they move into the early grades. It'll just, the learning process will be so much smoother. We're really meeting the needs of students, some of them that wouldn't be, um, wouldn't have that opportunity without this program. So you're asking me to take the 10,000 off of school choice and put it onto the town appropriation. So when we go to the town on what date? Is that 29th, I think it is. 26th of January or February? No, Fe February 26th, I'm sorry. February 26th, we'll be asking for 4.13% increase or 102,686. Add a little bit more. Uh, you, add, you, you guys, it's your budget. You tell me what the, you want me to do. The ESOL tutors. Mm -hmm. So where are you now? I'm still on the school choice. So I, I can't argue with the program. And I think it's great. But I'm, I, my rationale is just trying to work, yeah. chip away at Which what's on school choice. So, and so if we added that five, we would right. be asking for 107686 or 4.33%. I think that's, I, I'd like to start there. Um, so what was it so that comes to? So Mr. McFarland is yep. making a motion that we remove the um, ESL tutors yep. and the ECI um, yep. for a total of 15000 right. from the school choice budget right. to the town appropriation yep. so that we would then be asking the town for an increase of 4.33%. It's the 25 right? Mm -hmm. well, right, we would be yep. 2 million five ninety six twenty four, yep. and a difference of 107686 So I can easily make those changes, and I can send this to the town tomorrow, and they'll have their first look at it tomorrow. I think that's a, an awesome. honest start. start. All right, got a second uh, discussion. <laughs> Peter. Um, again, looking at page 21, the school choice funds. Um, I'm guessing that the reason that your estimate for FY19 revenue of 340,000 is down 50,000 from last year is you're just being conservative? No, it's, that's what they gave me. That's what the December report gave us. The December report gave you. Mm -hmm. Could you explain that to me? So we get, our, we get numbers in December of how many kids we've got. And right now, the kids we have will get us $340,000. So. That's FY18, so that's what I'm projecting for FY19. Patty, is the, is the 39518 from the actual FY18 from the December report as well? Th that's actual, that's what we got in June. Okay, so. Well, how about the SPED money? That the 390 includes the SPED increments. So that 340 could change? Yeah. Not counting. 340 could change. Okay. So I'm just like the, the 390 and the 340 are not the same, coming from the same spot. Right, uh, and that's because uh, let me let me just pull up the file because what 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 I believe happens is that if you were with us last year, they give us the sped an estimated sped increment. But if you're new, they have, they have no idea that we're going to be asking for a sped increment. Mm -hmm. So let me just pull up the school choice for 18. <coughs> while you're doing that, I mean, I, I would, um, I, I mean, I think it's good to be looking at this and we're, you know, which direction do we feel like it's, you know, more likely to go up or down. And, and I'd definitely rather hear on the conservative side here, especially given where we're at at this point um, in terms of what we're projecting for revenue from that, because you know, if we if we over project on revenue, and we're cutting and we're still cutting it, even and even moving that fifteen thousand, I mean, we're cutting this. I mean, when we were talking thirty some thousand last year, I thought that was, um, fr you know, really frightening proposition to be, you know, looking at an ending <coughs> balance potentially at that level and to you know to contemplate. Um, 
16, 17,000. No, so if it goes, if we if we took in 50 more and we and we ended it around 70,000, that's still way lower than we want to have our ending balance. But at least it's not kind of like keeping us up at night. Mm -hmm. So I mean, that's what I got on that. They're initially saying that we would get 396,584, but we know that there's a child on here that does not belong to us. Mm -hmm. The child belongs to Deerfield, so we have to take that off. Um, so doing, and that's, that, so when I did that, it went down to 34172. Um, and he, that, that's a big number. Mm -hmm. So right now our sped increment is with trim. So I need a new laptop. <laughs> this thing does not <laughs> Nope. <laughs> Take out a school choice. <laughs> <laughs> so the sped increment right now is 140,172. Of the 340,172, 140,172 is the sped increment. Okay. And just to, to finalize that, you know, is, so in April is when I actually do plug things into the in increment form, mm -hmm. and they give you an actual total. And so that June payment sometimes, so right now they're guesstimating using a formula of last year's mm -hmm. for our special education students, but the reality is, is in April they take that and, and stick everything in. And so the probability is that your June payment will have an increase in it. You know, but that's hard to actually say because again, it's five schools, so I can't do it off the top of my head. You may have a have had a sixth grade school choice student last year that was bringing in a lot of revenue and went to Frontier. Mm -hmm. You know, so I can't I can't keep it all in my head right now. So the way we usually work is we work with their projections, mm -hmm. um, and normally the majority of the time those projections are a little lower than the reality of the sped increment form. It could go the other way. So when you, you plug it in in April, yes, and then do you go back and plug in, because obviously there are going to be some things that happen in May and June that were different than the status quo. The IEP do you go back in once more and plug in the final no, numbers after the fiscal year is over? That's an excellent question. Um, they ask, the way things would change is if we actually amended the IEP in April or May. Mm -hmm. uh, usually we don't have many IEP amendments in, in May or June. Uh, but you're projecting out for the rest of the year of what it would look like, unless it's a major change. Uh, no, we don't really usually go into <coughs> those changes. But that, that's an excellent question. They just project out, um, again, unless it's a major change. Yeah. We're also down eight kids from where we were in June. So in June, we had 48. Right now, in December, we have 40. So just, I would rather stay conservative with this because we had a big and be pleasantly surprised last year. Uh, I think I that know. last year. Well, that's um, if you recall at the end of the last school year, we only recommended school choice openings for grades six and kindergarten. Right. Just based on right. And it's and what the one number that we're graduating out of six versus what we took in in kindergarten. I think it was a few more yeah. left. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, it, and it's. It goes up and down throughout the year, you know, I mean, families move out, move away, um, right. you know, in-town residents move to a close town, but then they still want to attend here, so yeah. they're technically yeah. seven through six. Interestingly yeah. enough, we had eight sixth graders last year. Yeah. <laughs> so we didn't lose anybody. So, um, you have a motion? yeah, yeah, any other thoughts about, um, motion so what is the motion <laughs> to, to move uh, um, to the uh, um, ECI yes. the 10,000 of ECI towards uh, uh, and the 5,000 of ESOL tutors that's on currently in school choice mm -hmm. to town appropriation so total okay. 15 okay. additional to the town appropriation um, bringing it to two million yeah, five ninety six yeah. of the yeah, I just wasn't. Yeah, that's what I heard. I um, and that was what was the percentage, Patty? You said four point three three. Four point three three. Um, 
Any other thoughts on it, or or is that is that enough? I mean, it's a start. I mean, it's a start. I mean, I think even even with this, I still think it's like the the, the you know. It, it's not like I would say, oh well, we've we've solved our school choice problem, of um, ba you know balance problem, uh, and our overall funding for the school challenges. So, um, but I, I do think it would be responsible. Yeah, I agree. But it's, the story a has, it's a discussion starter. Right. Exactly. The discussion exactly. has to be had. The kids are here. There are kids. There's some Sunderland kids, yeah. and we don't have room. So the school choice revenue is going down. But those, but the, the we're spending the school choice money on Sunderland kids, so it can't go well, away. As we talked about in town meeting last year, I mean, and I can pull up the numbers again, but you know, certainly before that meeting in February, but the, the select board knows it. I mean, the number of you know kids that were educating and the number of kids in Sun, you know, from Sunderland that were educating has gone up dramatically uh, in the last several years and the funding the budget amount for the coming the town appropriation for the school has not gone up by a corresponding amount i mean it's gone up but not you know uh nearly as much and so that's why we've been digging so deep into the school choice i, I think the projected enrollment will increase next year yeah exactly. it's incredible i mean it and it just i mean i think people have a hard time coming to grips with it because every story you hear about Western Mass is, is, you know, the declining population, certainly, of, of young families. And, um, well, we had a district study, said that, uh, right. study done that said we were going to be... Well, and it's to... true for the other towns in the district, right? I mean, largely tr true or no? Or... It, it, not as true as the... Okay. It's not as dire as... But over, the, as but over the last several years, at least, Sunderland's been the right. outlier. But, yes, um, you are growing yes. where everybody else is either maintaining or dropping. Or dropping. And maintaining with... Which did bring me to that one, one last question that I had, and then we can, or well, before we do the motion, just in case it does anything, <coughs> uh, um, I, I was surprised by the central office percentage dropping. Um, is it just because Frontier is growing, or I mean, again, because if we, if we're if we're growing relative, uh, we're growing, and the other schools are flat or declining. How how are we paying? A smaller percentage, or unless unless it's shifting to frontier. You went from eighteen point four three to seventeen twenty seven. Yeah. So that was part of it, and and the expenses. But that's right. That, but that's, the expenses have gone down too because we're we're not we're mm -hmm. spending minimal amounts of money on two nineteen Christian Lane, and hopefully right. we'll be. But, the fact, but how do we go down? The fact more? is that the October one count, which is the number for determining this stuff, went down twenty. Correct. Down. Okay. But down. Any others, more than and the price. Every word I hear has been, you know, enrollment taking off and so on. I only have the last three right, right here. So, and, and so last 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 school year we peaked at. I mean, our October one may have been two fifty eight. Yeah. Right. Is that is that accurate? It is. Yeah. Um, and then uh, midway through the year we went to sixty. Right. Uh, two sixty one. Um, and now this year we're 240 right now, I believe. And the October um, one was 238. 238, yep. So we've had a, a few kids move in. Um, but then, but now based on the number of sixth grade students departing and the projected number of incoming kindergarten students for going up again. Right, but the fact is that October one, basically a year and a quarter ago, was 258. And October one, three months ago, is 238. Correct. That's Which, down 20. That's caused, but that's still... That's what caused the that's, percentage to decrease. Right, but that's also... I mean, I'll add the question, which is... Not, I just got to raise it, but I don't want a discussion mm -hmm. on it. And the question is, um, in the budget discussions last year, there was concern because the school is growing, mm -hmm. okay, and lots of statements about how the school is growing and therefore things are going to get more expensive. And then I turn around and I see the October number, one number is down by 20, and I wonder gee, we ought to be looking in the budget for things that maybe were in there because the school was growing that we don't need to spend quite as much because the school, in fact, dropped 20 kids. I'm not saying that, you know, nothing we do is not important. I'm just saying that's a normal sort of thought. Like, gee, suddenly well, we're educating fewer kids. I, I, yeah, that, no, that's a good question also. But if you, if you take away two, two students at, you know, we have seven... K, K through six, there's seven grades. So you take away two students 
from each grade level that's 14. That's, that's not a reduction. In I understand staff, you don't right? save teachers, you don't, you know, there's a question of you've got certain efficient classroom sizes and you've got other very inefficient classroom sizes where you've got, you know, you need a teacher and a half and it just, it doesn't work. But so, there's still, you know, it's still, I can't, you know, I can't just ignore the fact that I, live, please, right. I can certainly uh, sort of object when we say we're, you know, we're growing, we're growing, we're growing, we're growing, and I look the last 12 months, we dropped 20. Right. Well, we dropped so, 20, but the, the 20, the, the, the ones that remain are higher need. I'm not arguing that. I'm so just, and we've never cost, we've never done a budget cost per child. So, and that's what you're saying. So if we had, no, if I, we're I, saying we're budgeting $175 per child in supplies and, and materials, then we should be able to take 175 times 20. We've never budgeted like that. So, but I, I take your point. If we can't answer that question here, mm -hmm. we don't want to be in town meeting and not already know <laughs> what's the answer. But what, so just to, to, to get to, right. I mean, I think it's in the overall context. I mean, I think, um, Every year it hasn't been, um, uh, well, so, so going back like this, you know, to 12, FY12, you know, that's where it bottomed at 172. Mm -hmm. That was after we lost a lot of kids. Um, and even resident, even, even without the choice, uh, well, I guess that's part of it is because there was a lot of choice out, but it, resident was at 130. Uh, but just to do, to do the totals, 172, then 183, 205. Is that including choice? That is, uh, total. yeah, that is total. Um, I can do it minus choice. Um, uh, but start there, 205, 205, 233. Right, then 258. 258, then and now 238. So that 238 is still more than two years ago. We, I mean, and that, that was that represented that 205 to 233. That's a 15% increase in enrollment in one year. And I can tell you our budget didn't go up by 15%. And not that it should. I mean, there's fixed costs and things like that. But you know, and then and then so um, you know the 183 you know to 205 was nine and a half percent roughly. Um, and then I do have it by. I mean, yeah, resident, if you just yeah. look at resident Sunderland, you know, resident K through six, you know, that was, um, again, bottomed out there, 130, 135, 149, that's a 10, 10 plus percent oh, increase, yeah, 149, 168, another 13% increase. What do you do? 186. So, does, I don't know what that is. Does, you know, this does, so, does, does, it is a small drop when you look at it grade by grade by grade, but does this give us a little bit of flexibility in terms of school choice next year so that possibly we're not... Right. That's one thing that certainly is. Mm -hmm. Might be a different consideration on that. If we, add, well, if we add in the kindergartners that are already, we have 16 down. There's actually 28. Next year will be 243 at this point. So right. this needs to be up. That number is with a low number, a low estimate for... But we did have the... Well, Regarding, regarding school choice, we've um, we've used always used school choice to fill a classroom and not create an additional section. Mm -hmm. So um, we we've recommended capping class sizes at 18 students for grades K through two and 20 students um, grades three through six. So last year we had close to 40, 41 sixth grade students leaving. Um, we now have a total of 33 kindergarten students and we were conservative. I, I had more application, we had more at school choice applications for kindergarten than we did um, recommended spots. Um, so you know, we, we could have easily tried to match that 258 number through accepting more school choice students, but we want to be obviously responsible in, in, in that area. And we have, and we have 33 in kindergarten right now. And, and it, we've also had some odd years in, in the past a few of, of students moving into town. Um, so our, our current fourth grade class, for example, uh, the summer 
leading into their second grade year, we had nine students move into town in second grade alone. You yeah. know, another year we had eight students move into sixth grade. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a noisy signal, but right. the overall trend, the long-term trend is up. Yeah. I think the demographic of the town, too, is, is different from the other towns in the district where we are going to have much more fluctuation, yeah. Yeah, much more movement. But, and I would not want to get into a situation like Deerfield <laughs> where we were funding an entire classroom for school choice, but if we are having small drops, whereas last year we said we couldn't add any here, 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 we do have the possibility that we might be able to add a couple more here or there, mm -hmm. not adding classrooms, and that might give us a little bit of flexibility on the school choice, where, and I would still maintain, still trying to, even if we have flexibility, still trying to move away from funding large parts of it with school choice. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, so there's a motion. I know from talking to the town finance committee, uh, they get it, mm -hmm. and they want stuff to be sustainable. They understand as we increase our appetite for risk and drain our shock absorbers, it just uh, it lessens the decoupling between bounces variability that we experience here and what they end up having to pay. Um, so. And I, yeah. I especially like Keith's proposal because if we're trying to get stuff off those rolls. We should at the same time be adding new stuff on. I think it's a, both a, a modest step and, a, a, as you said, a discussion. <coughs> uh, discussions, kiss starter, kicker, Kickstarter, whatever. <laughs> um, that I think makes a lot of sense, yeah. Uh, do we want to vote on it? Everybody ready to vote on it? Or, mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, all in favor? Opposed? All right, yeah, so we'll do that thing. Thank you, Pat, for being willing to get ready for us. Um, and that, and that will, we're we meeting with them, and then do we have our, we have another school committee meeting in a couple weeks, right? Right, yeah. right, right. Okay. before we go to the town. Okay, where you sit. I, I, you sound like you're wrapping up, but I'd like to raise another Yeah, no, I wasn't, I was wrapping up. I, I didn't mean that, I just meant in terms of thinking about okay. what other, um, you know, we'll, we'll, in other words, there'll be another opportunity to discuss this uh, if there's any new information before that meeting with them. Um, so, yeah. Um, and that's a part of uh, what I think should be in a budget, but I'm not sure whose budget and I'm not sure how much. And that is uh, it's something that was raised at our last meeting when you had a couple of items of capital expenditures that you uh, presented to us to vote on to, to forward to the Capital Planning Committee. And I remember expressing uh, some uh, concern about the process and uh, I thought about it a bunch more after the meeting and decided I hadn't really expressed myself well enough. Um, and I also did some looking back because in reading past minutes, I uh, saw that you had had, I can't remember his name now, the, the, the gentleman that takes care of uh, the uh, buildings in the district. The director of facilities, Bob Lesko. Right. And you had had him here in December a year and a month ago. Mm -hmm. And he had uh, put together a, I think, two to five year plan for various uh, concerns he had about things in the building. Um, and he uh, said that uh, uh, it was unreasonable at that point to ask him to price all this stuff out, um, but that obviously as we might be able to take care of things, then yeah, that would be something that you would do. Um, I then thought, gee, that uh, sounds like a good document to have, sounds like also the kind of document that you would have an annual go back and look at it and sort of update and, you know, if it's not asking somebody to reprice all this stuff just to sort of see where we are. Um, I then also, I've known the Schleckman for a long time and I was by Town Hall and you said something about maybe talking to Scott, I'm not sure. I talked, I was by there last evening just at the end of their meeting and I talked to them after the meeting and I said, Scott, I said, you run the, I said, you're listed as the, uh, the, the responsible Schleckman for the Capital Planning Committee, meaning they have different committees they're mm -hmm. assigned to and he was, that was his uh, territory and I said, did you get a copy of this uh, uh, two to five year um, building, building, maintenance. Building, maintenance. You know, building maintenance plan that they had put together? He said, no. 
I said, it would seem to me like that'd be the kind of thing you guys would be interested in. He said, you're absolutely right. I said, well, you know, I think uh, well, we should make sure that, that you get it. And also, I feel like for the purposes of this committee, uh, there ought to be a chance to sort of have a, you know, we have a whole budget discussion here. We don't talk about the building, in all honesty. There's one item in here about the building and this. That's a, uh, you know, I mean, I know there's a small amount, a relatively small amount that deals with just, you know, general sort of fixing things that go wrong, and it's not that big an amount. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I think we all agree with that. Okay. I also look to Frontier and what Frontier is going through now with doing a whole bonding thing for all the, you know, various things that have to be dealt with there. And the comment you hear is just standard in this, you know, in any sort of institution like this is you got a problem with deferred maintenance because whenever you run short of money, what do you, the first thing you do is you defer maintenance. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I look and I say, but for this little town, okay, this is our biggest building. It's our most expensive building, okay? Furthermore, it's in a way our most traumatic building given the experience with the roof falling in. Um, and so we ought to be bending over backwards to see what we can do to keep it, keep taking care of it, just for as bad as the building, but also obviously because, you know, you're supposed to be able to educate people better if you're not worried about the leaks coming in through the ceiling or whatever the problems are. So I think that's something that I would like to see this uh, committee pay some attention to and, uh, and, and also, I think that there is, um, there should be, I looked back at last year's, uh, the money that was passed at the town meeting uh, for this year's budget, okay, and there were a number of capital issues, uh, and I think I looked back the last two years, and not one of them was for the school, okay? And we're the biggest, we're the biggest building, you know, in the town, okay? And so, I don't think that you could say, well, we ought to just be taking care of that stuff within our budget. But the problem is human nature being what human nature is, the budget gets tight, the stuff doesn't get done. Okay, and the way you, the way you prioritize it, okay, is to run it through something like this capital planning committee. And the way you get them to understand the situation is to make sure they got the information. And so the information is not just the two items that we sent in, okay, by some deadline, the information is, you know, basically the two to five year plan as to what the state of the school is, because what you're trying to do is you're trying to get the rest of town government to buy into the fact that we've got to take care of the school, and it's not just our problem. And I think when you do that, you'll find that, yeah, we can access some funds, <coughs> okay, that might not have been available. And then you could even go back you know, at some point down the road, you may want to take this an item in here for 15000 for the security system, okay? 13500 of that is one-time cost, okay? 1500 is for the annual software or operating or whatever like that. The thirteen and a half, you know, really ought to be in a capital type of budget rather than a, you know, operating budget, okay? And that might be also kind of thing that yeah, you know, talk to the Capital Planning Commission. Maybe we can get that put through on the capital article of the town meeting rather than feeling like it's coming out of here. And furthermore, we might be able to start knocking back, you know, some stuff that's on Mr. Lesko's, I think his name, okay, uh, on his, you know, weighty document there because he seemed somewhat depressed by the number of things that were on there. And I, I, I mean, Ben, you deal with this building and you must be aware of things that, um, and, and we have been chipping away. You're chipping away, away but away. I don't think but it's, it's not necessarily. It's not. It's not the scope of what no, needs to be it's done. Not, it's not. It's not the thirteen thousand dollar, you know, right. items. Right. You know, the, it's the little stuff. It's a little thing. And I think yeah. that the capital planning committee expects you to take care of the little stuff. And I think <clears throat> right. Scott gave me some number, and I I wasn't listening carefully enough for it. Maybe I just didn't pursue it about thresholds at which they will get interested. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure we got stuff that, you know, they ought to be talking about, and I'm sure we got stuff that it would be worth our while to get them the information, okay, and then also to go to a meeting or two of them to make the case, okay? And I don't know, again, I'm not, I felt already I was stepping out of my, 
you know, proper role here by just talking to them, but was informal and so on. And I just want to pass that on to this committee is something that I think we ought to pursue. Yeah. So if I hear you correctly, Peter, you would like us to come next month with that list, with the five-year, um, I asked for a five-year plan, right. what the building would need, what the building would need in the last year, so that we could really have an idea of where we're going. We can certainly bring that next month. But I think we also ought to get that to the Capital Planning Commission. And you could say, uh -huh. and I, what, I, what I, what I, again, I used to run the Finance Committee. It's been a long time, okay? And I was perfectly happy. To me, it was always worth it to go to other people's meetings, not to feel like, oh, they've got to come to us mm -hmm. kind of thing. And so I came to a number of school committee meetings just to increase communication. Mm -hmm. And I would like to see us feel like, yeah, we can just, you know, send somebody or, you know, one or two people to go when these meetings come up and just make sure that, you know, if they got questions or just get them educated about what the things are here that we need to take care of. And, and I, we have had some, um, you know, I'm surprised we didn't to get this document to them or it didn't cross paths, but because uh, we do have those kind of discussions with them, uh, you know, about, about the, the capital projects for the school and looking at, and it both, both because, because we want them to know about it and help us uh, plan for it and they want to know, uh, and, you know, I think, you know, the, 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 they've been really good about right. trying to work to, you know, be responsible about um, planning for these expenses and having, you know, uh, money for it and then um, prioritizing. Right. And so I think, but I think what's happened is really it's, it's come down to where the, I mean, there wasn't even a, 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 a capital, there wasn't even a special account funded. I mean, there was the account, I think, but I don't think it was funded until a couple of years ago. That it right, but it is funded now. Right. And, and there the was last two years, years, we've got nothing. But I don't think it's for lack of... It's for lack, it's for, for lack of asking them. That I don't, if, we I just, if we just are sending in, you know, a request, okay, with no follow-through, Okay, we're not doing ourselves a favor. Okay, the question is, you know, we want to make we want to make the extra effort. Mm -hmm. Okay, and and I think it's also just good politics because you've got the town. You know, it may be hard because you have the feeling like the school runs this building. Okay, and you don't want someone, you know, impinging on your turf. Okay, but when you are trying to get them involved in a financial way in supporting this building, then you have to be, you know, not, not like letting them take over or anything like this, but letting them be part of it. We okay? And you got some it. very smart people, <laughs> and you got some very smart people just on the board, if nothing else. I mean, Scott's an electrician, okay? Tom's got all sorts of experience with buildings and stuff. And I used to, when we were building the library, okay, I would, every, would, the year we were building it, we'd have construction meetings every week. And, and I would go to these construction meetings, and after every meeting, I'd sit down and I'd write a, a, a report to Tom and say, here's what's going on, here are the problems we've got, here's what we solved. And any number of times, okay, that was useful because he would have ideas, okay, mm -hmm. by people he knew, or if nothing else, it was just, I knew down the road, I'm not going to be in trouble because I've let him know this is what we're doing. Okay, and it was really this sort of communication. I mean, I don't, excuse me, I feel like I'm, again, talking too much, but you guys have all got kids and so on, and you know about education at school, and I don't, okay? But I have experience dealing with the town and about, you know, communicating and stuff, and I just think it's important. I would the point's like, taken. I would yeah. just like, yes, and thank you for that. And I would just like to say, Last year, we were so concerned about getting the budget through that we didn't want to muddy the waters or complicate the issue by also asking for a capital, uh, a capital expenditure. And we were really focused on getting the budget through. But your point is well taken, and I certainly will facilitate this. I'll bring it next month, and I will send it to Sherry Patch so she can um, forward it to the Capital Planning Committee. And then somebody ought to follow up and talk to Scott, and maybe go to the meeting if they've got questions, you know, or something like this, or even like, guys, here are two or three or four things maybe you're thinking about. Can we arrange some time you can come over here and take and we'll actually show you 
okay? This kind of stuff you got to do, and then, you know, next thing you know, yeah, gosh, we got to do that. You know, sometimes it takes somebody getting in and looking at things saying, wow, I didn't realize this is what you're talking about. Yeah, we got to get that on the list. Because well, we, did we, send them, we did send them the poor quality of camera pictures that we had. Right, right, but anyway. I don't know if it's going to make it any better. For I'm not, I'm not, it. last thing I'm trying to do here is find any lady blame or anything like that. I'm just suggesting more stuff we could do proactively. I think opportunities to um, build relationships throughout the town, select board and the whole community, uh, um, the more the better. And um, so I, I, I think you're like, you know, going to meetings or being, you know, conversations and with, with folks, you know, within the, the rules of... <laughs> of um, We're not deliberating. Yeah, I know, exactly. Uh, absolutely gathering information is right. absolutely appropriate and, and great. And um, I mean, it, honestly, you know, whether, I mean, it, it'd be great if you, if, for the next meeting to get that sense of what were the last couple of years of appropriations out of that capital budget. I got them right with me. Yeah. Okay, and then um, what we've done, you know, maybe we can look at what we've done over the past couple of years there. And if there is an opportunity, I don't know if that, that there is in our current budget, if there is an opportunity to shift something potentially to that, then again, that'd be a great That's discussion to have was, with them. I was, I was asking, I'm asking to pull out the, out of the building fund pull out 15,000 for security and testing that we know has right. to go for inspections, for fire alarms, that's right. in our budget is 18. So, I mean, you is take that, out 15, then you get $3,000 to fix the budget. It doesn't make sense. So then, so, 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 so we do ask for the 15. We're asking for 15,000 for sec building security and testing right. so right. that we can leave is our that, general that repair a, building that a, at 18. intact. Right, right. Is that an ongoing, yeah. regular annual thing? Yep. And Wait, that the to me is not something that would be... The 15 is an annual? No. Yes. To, to, uh, me, to me, the one in this budget that qualifies is the money for buying the new security system. We have $15,000 that we spend every year for, for the security testing, for the fire alarm testing, for pest control, um, for our heater, our boiler inspection, every year, $15,000. These are actual things. Which, so if something breaks, there's no money because it's all in the. But I think, but I think those aren't, but those, so are, it won't qualify. those are operating costs. Correct. Right. So right. I'm asking for 15000 more in, in, in operating costs for right. the building so that we can spend the money set aside for repairs on repairs. Okay, so that line item went up by fifteen. Or no. the, the security and testing is going up. Okay, is that already in there? Yes, it's yeah. done. Yeah, what I thought. Her, okay. um, she has a summary page, number three. Who wanted to list the what two. they spent money on? Page two. So, so that will leave us $18,000 right, and three and $3,500 for supplies and materials. We'll leave us how much? But, $18,050 and $3,500 for supplies and materials so it's a to total actually of like do 30, some repairs. Right, right, right. So the total is like $33,000. Right. Okay. That's what, they spent. That's what we spent money on the last two okay. years. Okay. What page were you uh, referencing? Page 2 of 24. And you can see in the summary, uh, halfway through the page under operational increases, the 15,000 is underneath our uh, building security and testing. Right, but that's already in the budget. Yeah. No, it's not. Not it's now. In, it, right no, right it's now, it's in the 18,000 that we get to fix the building. For and I'm asking to pull it out, add another 15, so that we actually have $18,000 to fix the building every year. Where would that be in the... what? It, it's so right in it's now. in cost center 4225 building security systems. So so Patty, are you essentially creating an additional line item? Correct. Yeah. Right. And yes, she already has it in the fiscal. But it's year. already in this package, yes. right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Fine, that's all. Yeah, yeah. Nobody's suddenly saying add another fifteen thousand mm -hmm. to this package. No, yeah. on it. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. 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 Right, what well, page is four two two five? So if you go to oh, got it. No. 19. <coughs> so if you go to page 10 of 24 under contracted service under building security systems 4225 contract services I've added $15,000. Right now that 15 
look, look a couple lines above. See where it says 18,050? Mm -hmm. Right now, that 15 comes out of that 18, which then leaves us $3,000 to make repairs to the building. Yeah, yeah. That's not enough money. So that's why it was bumped up by. That's why I'm by, pulling it out. This is yeah. these are recurring charges for fire alarm testing, heat boiler inspection, mm -hmm. pest control. It's a, it needs to be a separate item. Right. Yeah. Okay. And now it's a separate item. I can see it on where. I'm sorry. On page ten of twenty four. Okay. Thanks. In fiscal year 17, we spent $14,471. And by adding that $15,000 extra line item, I mean, leaving the $18,050, that's still pretty conservative. Right. I mean, we've got foreseeable like recurring expenses, and then we've, we've got the other stuff for actual repairs. When I came here six years ago, the two things I noticed in every school that was deficient was the maintenance budgets and the technology budgets. The maintenance budgets oh, yeah. were still set oh, yeah. to when we built the buildings brand oh, new more, 20 years ago. Well, every year that they age, you need to add money. And we weren't, no one was doing that. So we have a 20 year old building that we're trying to run on $18,000 a year and 15,000 of it is recurring testing. And, and, and as Peter was saying, this is the most expensive, largest building. We should be able to make $18,000 worth of repairs a year. And then it wouldn't get to the point where it needs to become a capital item because we'll be able to maintain it better by using the $18,000 to repair <coughs> rather than asking to replace. Even though there's still going to be stuff because you've got well, major expensive systems well, here that have, it, a, that have a limited life right. and there's going to be stuff that just... We're at the end of life. We, this building is now 20 years old. We've got things that are at the end of their life cycles. So we're asking 18, but does it look, am I seeing that we actually spent 25 last year? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And that so was when still, we had some year end money. Right. You pulled out in this year's budget a whole lot of uh, things that collectively I think you call software expenses because mm -hmm. they had not been in the budget before. Did well, this is we're classing them too, so we're 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 trying to get get, get in line with the way Desi wants us to account right. for them. Was that pulling out and therefore freeing up money because you didn't reduce these other items that you took the money out of, or was this? Basically, just reclassifying and not affecting the tightness or the looseness of the budget. Re reclassifying. Right. So when I got here, it, it, let's say uh, I, I, that we had a line that said computers and there was $10,000, okay, and they spent it. Mm -hmm. But then in the principal supplies, they had, they had $2,500 left over. They would buy a, uh, something computerish and put it in the principal supplies mm -hmm. rather than reporting it in to be $2,500 over in computers. So the, my biggest challenge is, what are we really, really spending money on? What's really happening? So now what, we, what I say to our principals is, tell me where you're moving it and then I'll move the money so that, we'll, so that we know that that's what we're spending. So that we're no longer putting computers in the principal supply line, we're putting them yeah. in the computer. And line. then we can see projected and yeah. yeah. actuals. Yeah. And, yeah, good. Yeah. Great. So, I mean, we've got the meeting in February, I think, um, you know, we should take this home to adjust it further. If we have questions or other things like we'd like um, for these guys to be prepared for, for to talk about uh, and help us with in that Feb meeting, um, the Feb, like early Feb. Is our Feb meeting before their Feb yeah, meeting? Yeah, yeah, okay. ours, we have an early, because of the, the oh, because it's uh, spring uh, the break, break. yeah, winter break. Winter break. Okay. Um, so let's you know send the questions in. I think ideally, kind of copy each other so we all are Just on the don't same deliver, page. Right. We don't right. It's this information gathering. Um, Would it be possible? I'm just going to toss this out. I'm strictly speaking for my own interest, and that is 
Before I joined this committee, I had already made a commitment for the beginning part of February, and I cannot come to the next meeting, which okay. is in whatever it is, the first week it's or like something. It's like the sixth or something, or something like that, and, and there's no way I can break this commitment. Yep. Yep. Um, and yet I, you know, so that I, obviously I will be, you know, I can get emails and stuff like that about, you know, questions or submit questions or whatever, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, discussion is part of this whole operation because that's how you get a consensus and um, I, can, was, I was sort of dismayed and I you know if that's the, if it's just that meeting and then the meeting and uh, you know later in March that has the public hearing as part of it and so on and that's all you want to have that's fine I would love to see another meeting in there but I also realize you guys have got families and busy lives and I'm retired and so on and about time. And the other thing, Peter, is that Dr. Carey and I have four other schools and four other towns. I'm, I'm so this right. is our busiest time of the year. Yeah. And because we're not only going to school committee meetings, towns are asking us to meet with them. So we've got double the meetings. So it would be very difficult to try and add. But I think, look, if it would, you know, we'll know. I mean, I think we'll have a good sense. Honestly, probably by the time we meet with the select board. Um, what it's going to you know be like this year how challenging and so on and i think you know if we get to a point and we see like we absolutely we're going to have to have another meeting mm -hmm. um you know, we've been in positions like that before and then we, we schedule them okay is there um, a date set for meeting with the selectman february 26th okay. yeah that's fine on monday um, and that's at their place yep mm -hmm. 6 30. okay um, and you meet with finance committee at the same time Usually. Usually they're there. Okay. Um, okay. Um, any other <coughs> questions for me? Like I said, I, I, this is absolutely like, this, this, the intent of this is kind of like to be our, uh, you know, first look at this as it is and to um, have the kind of questions and initial discussion we had tonight, but uh, it's the beginning of the process, uh, not to be anywhere near the end, so. Um, did you have something? Just real quick. Yeah, I did talk to Scott Paul at IT about the security camera stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, these numbers are very soft. They, they, they don't reflect a hard quote. Uh, and, you know, this is a time we, we put together the, uh, the playground and stuff. So, uh, you know, some of these cameras, the $1,000 outdoor ones, may have some pan tilt zoom capability that we may or may not. So uh, if we do get this budget through, uh, this may or may not eat the improvement for uh, 2018. You know, it, I, I'm gonna continue to work that. Uh, do you think it's soft meaning they're too low or they're too high? No, I mean that the number hasn't been really vetted right. in terms of, yeah. uh, okay, what do we really need? It, I, I, Okay. I think potentially there's Good. some opportunity to move it down, uh, but we also but want to make gotta it. you've got to get a system that works. It's got to be able to do what we need to do. I, right. my, in my conversation with him, it was very clear that there's a real need for knowing who's in the building and what they're really doing here. You know? yep. So yep. Yep. we need to address that for sure and, and do it as financially responsible as, as we can. So tomorrow I will send out to the school committee and to the town version two with those changes. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, committee and other reports. We have any committee reports? Let's see. Uh, we, have, we have the policy subcommittee. Right. Um, we did have a couple of items. Uh, one thing that was, uh, we're going to have, uh, I think, some language changes that are fairly. Uh, simple to bring stuff in line with uh, the Massachusetts Association of School Committees, which is uh, trying to keep pace with the laws and uh, keep our language, you know, more in tune with uh, the Mass General laws. Uh, one item that did get brought up was, do we want to have uh, like step increases based on longevity for employees? Uh, I want to say it was like uh, two hundred and fifty dollar increases every five years it's yes. a one time for non-union employees that are not um, not covered under the uh, CBA uh, that would be your central office workers and your custodians your secretaries, secretaries in the buildings 
Right now, their, uh, con their agreement, it's not a contract, but we have a procedure every five years. So I think there's 10, 10 years, they get $250 for longevity. Uh, 15 years, they get $500. Uh, 20 years, they'll get set, they, they already get 750 And so the, the request would be, if they um, continue longer to 25, 30, and 40 years, that we would go up 500, I mean $250. So a, a 25 year person would, um, would receive a thousand dollars, and then a thirty-year person would receive twelve hundred fifty dollars. So it's a program that's already in place, but right now it tops out after twenty years. Okay. And the question is, do uh, should we be extending it beyond twenty years for the handful of people who have been here thirty, forty years? Okay. And it is a small handful. So is this something you want to bring to the to us in a? meeting in the future I, yeah i think yeah. so so there was some question about well what does that mean for this group and then what, what is the total cost across the district so we took an action to, uh, they're going to get back and actually figure out what the data is okay. and what that would actually mean on an ongoing basis but it was just it was an item that came up to make you aware of i honestly don't think anyone in sunderland elementary school that is not covered under a cba does he? It wouldn't apply. Yeah. yeah. It, there's no impact. Yeah. Is this a district wide policy or a school board school it's policy? It, it is two. It's two. Yeah. One for Frontier, Frontier and one, one for the Union. union. Okay. So it's district wide. I mean, it's. It's district wide, yeah. but it's two agreements. We, right. We're not just doing this on our own. Right. Okay. Mm -mm. No. Okay. You want Frontier information or not? Uh, sure. Yeah. We did a lot of discussing about mowing the fields and watering the fields. There's okay. actually a, a tremendous amount of uh, the budget tied up in that actually in terms of hmm. um, Deerfield's uh, sewer abatement policy. Um, the school was audited and they did very well. Um, the ongoing um, work on the, the roof is going well. There's a building subcommittee that's meeting to work on bonds and the uh, frontier budget negotiations are on as well. Thanks. Um, we do need to uh, wrap for the collaborative going forward. Um, I don't know, uh, Peter, but <laughs> you have any interest in, in that? It was, uh, um, our previous members um, had taken that on. Uh, think about it, maybe. Uh, well, like, uh, I don't. Know, you familiar with the collaborative? Uh, very much. Okay. Um, they're great. It's a great resource, uh, and um, you know it's important, obviously, to um, have oversight. Uh, um, and it's not that I did it for a number of years. It's every other month. Um, for the meetings, uh, they do go for you know a bit, but they do feed you. As Dr. Curry said. <laughs> All right. Uh, so moving on from uh, committee reports, so uh, principal's report. Great. On uh, two separate occasions of the past couple of months, um, we've formed an early childhood playground committee, <clears throat> and uh, we're meeting to look at ways we can revamp and refresh the early childhood playground, which is in much need of um, some TLC. Uh, we plan on submitting a CPA request this year to the town, which would cover consult and design costs. Um, there are a number of grants where the applications are due in June, July that we're gonna be applying for. And so if, you know, if we had a crystal ball and everything went uh, to plan, we'd hopefully be looking at starting some form of renovation in 2019. Uh, school council update. Um, at our last meeting, we met with our new food service director, Mary DeLusa. Um, she provided the committee with an update of the changes that have taken place in our cafeteria. We discussed that a little bit earlier on tonight. 
Um, the, the next meeting we're going to look at um, what Peter brought up, the build to building maintenance projects, as well as uh, where we're at with the FY19 budget planning progress uh, pro mm -hmm. process. Um, tomorrow, important dates, we have our second grade Cafe Sun. There's a four town safety meeting for the administrators, local PD, fire, state police as well. This coming Thursday is International Night, starting at 5 p.m. Um, it's uh, meant to celebrate our community's diversity. It's a potluck style meal. And starting at, then at 6 p.m., former music teacher Ed Hines is gonna be performing. Uh, PTO meeting coming up next week. Another school committee meeting. Uh, dining out night at Bertucci's is a fundraiser for our PTO. More school council meetings. School vacation is the 19th through the 23rd. And that's about it. Can I pass you on something to? Um, I read in the minutes a few meetings back ago about a donation that you got from the water department in town, yep. I believe, to that you were. I don't need to go through it now, just that that was something that surprised me in a very pleasant way because I just thought, wow, isn't that cool that people in the water department who, you know, generally probably, I mean, I, I, I know, I think, I'm not sure if I know all of them, but whatever, but they probably don't have little kids in the school right now. And uh, how cool that they're doing something supporting the school. And so I, I then happened today to run into one of the commissioners, and I just started, I said, hey, I says, I saw about this. I says, what's the deal? And he says, oh, he says, you know, we just, uh, you know, it's something they like to do. And, and I gather they've done some stuff in the past for helping the school out with water, getting water out of the field. So I, don't, I didn't get all the details, but I just know that it was real nice, okay, to uh, hear, again, another example of some other part of town you know, coming in, helping out with something at the school, and I'm sure this stuff happens a lot, and I just think it's important to recognize it when it does happen, and I'm not sure if, if uh, Fred Laurinaitis is still the, the chair of that yes. board, yes. and I, you know, to the extent that you, you know, send them a note of thanks at some point or whenever it's appropriate, or just, you know, or invite them back, you know, come back at some point to, hey, let's have a, you guys take a look and see what we're doing, because... <laughs> You know, I know some of those guys, they do a lot of work for the town and all sorts of little projects, and it's the kind of thing that keeps the town going in many ways, and they can be wonderful, useful here at this place, too, and so... And, and Fred approached me over the summer, right. um, I, saying there's some um, funds available for science-related right. activities at the school, and he kind of left it up to us mm -hmm. um, where we went with that, and so we came back with the proposal uh, last last school year we built our um, created a vegetable garden out back and now um, we're doing a water capture system using the pavilion out back and so it's we're in the very beginning stages the Hitchcock Center from Amherst has been coming and doing PD sessions with our sixth graders on the design process um, we're taking a field trip there with our fifth and sixth grades in a couple weeks and then the older students are going to be going down uh, into the younger grades, and I think, like t kindergarten, for example, they're going to be responsible for the uh, the trans transportation component of the project. Yeah. The water is going to get from the pavilion to the to the garden. Um, so yeah, and and to that point, I did in the um, the the quarterly newsletter. I did mention that. Cool. In the last, I think it's just that you know when people are 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 you know, so willing to help out with the school, it's important to acknowledge their, their contributions because, you know, it takes a whole town to run this place. Absolutely. Okay, yeah. thank you. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Um, superintendent's report. I'm going to be very quick tonight, and um, this is my report. The reason why I had asked Karen Ferrandino to stay was because this is her task force that she's working on. This is a special ed task force, um, but I, <coughs> In the yes, you know, she, it's a long day. So I asked, I told her to go and then I would speak to it. Uh, essentially, what what uh, one of the things, and you all remember um, my uh, my original goals uh, in October, and one of them was to uh, facilitate and get this 
task force running, and uh, it wasn't fleshed out very well. So um, I took it off. We, we, I met with the committee and we decided not to put that on. But I do want to inform you because there was a question in December at the Frontier meeting, you know, what is going on with the um, task force? Because you had talked, because I had talked about it earlier. And uh, what I'd like to do is explain what it is. It is facilitated by um, a consultant from the collaborative and uh, Sharon Jones and Karen Ferrandino. And what they're working on is uh, providing one system of support. In other words, when we have students that are special education students, and there's a variety of disabilities that go into having students. Some students are more disabled than others. But the goal of this district, the goal of this task force is not to isolate them or not to put them in special programs where they're not in touch with their typical peers or not working with typical peers as role models in a, in, in a daily, um, as much as, as often as possible during the day. There's three focus groups that they've done and one is uh, called MTSS and that's multi-tiered multi, multi support systems. There's a group of educators working on that. We have educators volunteering to be on this task force. They're working on um, how we can provide multi-tiered uh, support systems in a classroom, not only for the, the students that struggle, but also for those that need extension. In other words, uh, enrichment, students that are going faster than what the middle's going. So we'd like to personalize their education as well. A uh, vertical alignment of inclusive services, that is um, when we have students, so we have these very young students, they're in the classroom, they're working in the classroom all day with their peers, they're pulled out maybe for speech or maybe for um, another service, but essentially as they grow into their cohorts and their grades grow up, the services they get will be the same. When they leave this school, if they are a special ed student, they will move into um, Frontier, but they will still have the same uh, essential support services. Of course, as they grow, they, they extinguish, not extinguish, but they sometimes sunset on their needs. And others will always need, until they're 22, they will always have needs. So, and then the last one, of course, is always uh, parental engagement. And so there's three task force working on these things. And um, the goal is to have a, a special ed strategic plan in June. Uh, these people are working very hard. I wanted to call them out. There's, I think, 15 or so people on the committees now. They meet during uh, early release days. They've met four times already. And uh, as you remember, uh, in October from my goals, but then the strategic plan. And the strategic plan had three areas, curriculum, assessment, and the uh, special ed task force. And so I wanted to fill you up, fill you in on the progress of our strategic plan. And uh, I was hoping that Karen could be here, uh, but that's essentially it in a nutshell. Well, it was good to have her here earlier yes. in the meeting. Yes. Yeah, she answered a bunch of questions. Yeah, she was yeah. great like yeah. that, yes. So thank you. All right, thank you. All right, and now before uh, taking the motion to adjourn, uh, I just want to say thank you for the work on this um, first cut on this budget, first thank big cut. Yes, uh, thanks. thanks. It's thanks. great, and I love you know how I love um, some of the things you've done over time with um, being able to uh, see the total cost, see it how it, where the sources of the funding are coming for those line items, rather than having it kind of disappeared within the numbers um, so greatly appreciate that no problem great job um all right that said i will entertain a motion to adjourn there's we'll make a motion to adjourn all right second second all right all in favor all right um.